Hello everybody. The Air Art is back. Yes, I managed to get it tuned this week. Uh, so we're going to play on it today. Um, and I made plans to do that and, you know, it's kind of a shock coming back to this piano. It's so different from the Blutner that I've been playing on for the last, you know, couple months. Um, you know, it's easy to forget how the, how the action is different, how it feels different. Uh, to play on that error. Um, it's just a lighter touch um, and the tone color is so different. Um, it always, every time I go back to playing on an error, it's like it takes a little getting used to the, the sound of the instrument. Um, but that's part of what makes it interesting to me is to explore that. When you first hear the error sound, it sounds like it's out of tune. Um, and of course, part of that depends on the music you're playing on it. Um, but the out of tunedness really is part of the sound of this instrument. This is an instrument that dates from 1876, um, but it was already starting to become uh, a little behind the times by then. Um, so it really does represent a mid 19th century piano sound ideal. Um, and it's been interesting for me to explore it. There's really no substitute for actually having the instrument in your life on a regular basis so you can just play it all the time. Uh, it makes a huge difference from my understanding. One of the basic elements of the sound is something called non-harmonic sound. You get a lot of kind of what some people might call clang or clangorous sound in the sound of the error. Um, and that's normal for this instrument. Um, it, in fact, this instrument really um, wants to be in a large space. Um, this is not as loud as a modern concert grand piano by any stretch, but it is definitely not intended as uh, primarily um, an intimate sound. You can play intimate sounding music on it, but what it really wants is to be in a big concert hall where the sound can ring out, you know, in a big resonant space. Here I have a pretty big space, but um, it's still a little small, I think, for what the piano wants. And uh, there's a lot of flat surfaces here. I really am going to need to try to get more acoustical deadening material in this space, because there's some echo that happens that you might hear. It's not that the piano is buzzing. It's actually echo in the room. Uh, that you're going to hear when you when you hear me play this. Um, the other thing about the piano, of course, is the damping mechanism that is a very light mechanism for a big piano like this. Um, by this time, a lot of other piano makers had come up with a much stronger damping system where the sound would suddenly just cut right out when you lift the pedal. But here, when you lift the pedal, it's, it rings for a while. And in, in that way, it's reminiscent of pianos from the earlier part of the century. You might even also think of harpsichord, uh, which has a kind of a ringing glow to the sound. Um, so non-harmonic noise um, and um, you know, a, a, a light damping system contribute to the different quality of tone. And of course, I, I also, again, have to get reacclimated to playing on this piano. Um, for our first, you know, repertoire back uh, on the Erard, I am playing um, a group of five pieces by um, Danish composer Niels Gade, the Aquarellen, which is um, watercolors is the name of the, the set. Uh, this was composed in 1849 and 1850 um, and constitutes the first of two books in his Opus 19. Um, he did compose a third book under a different opus number in 1881. Um, but these represent the, his mid-century work. Um, and it seemed to me it would be an interesting choice uh, for the ARR piano. Um, uh, Niels Gade, again, like a lot of these, you know, composers from the 19th century that are not the most famous, will remind you of other famous composers. You might think of Schumann right away, and certainly Mendelssohn as well. Um, in terms of the choice of instrument, you know, Schumann famously is very associated with uh, 
certain Viennese pianos uh, of the earlier part of the 19th century. Um, Mendelssohn also played on many different pianos in his time, and you know his association uh, with um, you know Victoria and Albert um, in England. Um, the English pianos again are different from Viennese pianos, um, and Erard also figures in Mendelssohn's uh, kind of sphere um, of pianos that sometimes he's associated with. So the air art is definitely part of the 19th century. It makes an interesting choice, I think, for uh, these Niels Gade pieces. Um, you know, as we keep exploring the repertoire, we'll bump into Niels Gade again. He was a, um, a person active um, in a variety of ways uh, during the, con during the, the century, uh, during that period of the 19th century. Um, and, um, uh, We'll certainly keep trying to play some music on this piano the next few weeks. I'm going to try to have a few other things uh, prepared on this instrument. So uh, I really do hope you enjoy it. In any case, please um, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down or, or some kind of comment on the page. Uh, I'd love to hear from you.